Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another painting session. This time we're going to do a little uh, seascape and oils. I've had a few requests for that. So, uh, plus I'd always do all my paintings in acrylic. So uh, this time I'm going to take the time and do an oil painting for you. Uh, it's a nice sunny day down in South Florida. So let me show you my material. Uh, I'll be using Gal Kit from Gamblin to help with the drying speed of the paint. So here are my colors. I have uh, Cad Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, uh, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, and of course White. And remember I did say that I'm using Gal Kit to speed up the drying time for this painting so I could add additional layers um, quicker than uh, I would if using linseed oil. So as you can see I toned down my canvas and uh, just so that the colors will come through a little bit. Uh, so I'm making this kind of a purplish sky which is uh, a mixture of ultramarine blue, cad yellow and a little bit of alizarin crimson. And the reason I added the cad yellow to this uh, purple mixture is, was because I wanted to grade down the sky a bit, not make it too purple. And uh, so as you can see, now I'm just kind of working a little bit with um, on the ocean. So I'm using ultramarine blue, cad yellow, and a little bit of burnt sienna. And the burnt sienna as well will bring down that uh, that blue a little bit, not make it too, too blue, you know. Bring down the chroma. I don't want everything to be like high key. Um, just try to make things a little bit subtle. So just keep that in mind. As you can look at the sky again, see how some of that uh, uh, color is coming out, uh, some of the uh, base color is coming out from uh, toning the canvas. This is the result that I was looking for. Since the majority of this painting is gonna be of an orange color. So now as you can see, I'm just trying to block in as much of the painting so I can start judging values and colors um, be against each other. And now I'm painting the sand and you will see a difference. See, right now you don't see the sand showing very, very well. And that's perfectly normal because of the toned canvas at the base. But once I start putting in the grass, you will see that the color of the sand is gonna start showing even more. So now for the grass, I'm, um, for, I guess I could say the grass, the sea oats, uh, instead of just using orange, I'm making a mixture of uh, alizarin crimson and cad yellow. And some, and some uh, parts of it, I'm actually using a little bit of burnt sienna. And with that same mixture, as you can see in this green here, I'm starting a new pile and just adding a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue to this color. And here I'm just working on the dark colors, but I'm not making them too dark. They're basically mid mid-tone darks and uh, soon I will post a picture of the finished painting so you can see uh, a little bit of the difference uh, in these darks and what I'm doing with it so here it is this you can see the purple on the right hand bottom side and this is what I'm working on right now looks completely different it's, it's just the ugly stage right now okay so to make these colors I'm just going arbitrarily uh, Placing darker greens, you know, reds and oranges, but mid-tone colors, remember that, because I will add eventually darker colors on top of that, and then I'm gonna add also lighter colors. So I'm just using a middle value, not 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 too dark value, just a middle value. And some of this gray down orange that you see here uh, is basically the same thing, alizarin crimson, yellow, and a little bit of blue added to it to gray it down a little bit. It gives it a little bit of greenish tint. And I didn't really didn't care whether some of the colors kind of mixed into each other because eventually I'm gonna go over top of them with lighter colors and uh, maybe even some darker, darker color. My whole point right now is just to fill in the canvas. So uh, that's what I'm working on. And can you see now that I have the grasses in, can you see just in the back here where I have the sand, the lighter part of the sand, how it just got a little bit lighter? 
Now, as I start putting more darks in and uh, other values in the painting, you will see that the sand will become even lighter. And I will add even lighter highlights and some darker areas in that sand just to bring it out a little bit more. So now I'm just working on a little bit on the shadow. Uh, I'm using ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna as well just to uh, gray down and tone down the blue. I didn't want to use just pure uh, ultramarine blue for, uh, for the shadow because um, it would have been too much of a high chroma. Just, you know, bring it down, make it subtle. We don't need to make it, you know, too, too bright eye popping because I don't, I don't want the scent to be, you know, the focus of the whole painting. A lot of the painting is about subtlety. So that's what I'm working on right now. And just to reiterate, if you didn't catch this, uh, this is in oils. And uh, tell you the truth, I was debating whether to do this in acrylic. Um, but since the request was, you know, I don't do enough oil painting, so this is for you guys. So now, right now, I'm just working a little bit of reflection from the sky into the water because it's a little bit of a distance. You can see some of the sky reflecting on the shoreline as the waves come crashing in and receding. So basically, that's that's what I'm doing here by just using a little bit of ultramarine blue white uh, as well. And now I'm trying to add a little bit more highlight to. Uh, the sand here okay just to bring it out a little bit more so all I'm using is just a little bit of an orange color basically the same mixture I use for the grasses of uh, yellow and alizarin crimson and I just add a, a lot of white that's all I did and then some parts I add a little bit of alizarin crimson like little hints uh, to make it a little bit more pink to, to highlight the, gra the, the sand a little bit more. So it's important that you know uh, when you add midtones then I could start either adding highlights or make or put in darker colors. That's why I like working with midtones. Sometimes I will start with you know very very dark colors and work to my light uh, lighter colors. So as you can see those background grasses I did them I they're blurred out a little bit and I did it on purpose because it is not the main focus of the painting and it's a distance. Now I had a problem showing that you know those grasses had highlights on them so I had to adjust it so the only way to do that was to darken the sand behind these grasses okay. I could have tried and just gone like lighter orange colors but it would have been too light and it would have been too close to the sand it was not it's not what I was going for so the only other option was to darken um, the background for the grasses and here again doing the same thing I'm just adding a lot of the darker shadows inside the, these tall grasses uh, it's just basically a lizard crimson uh, that I'm using and a little bit of, of uh, ultramarine blue with that lizard crimson and since this is oils uh, some of that uh, orange color will mix in to th with these darks and kind of tone it down a little bit not to make it too dark and now again the same thing with those greens that I'm working on right now uh, I'm just using my fan brush and using the edge um, of my fan brush almost like a knife and just going up and down uh, like a jigsaw basically and going all over the place just to give like indications of grass and to make that dark green I just use uh, ultramarine blue cad yellow and I used a little bit of alizarin crimson to darken the color and I didn't use any white with it um, but I did use white eventually with that mixture when I started going to the highlights of these grasses so right now I'm just basically using my uh, little fan brush. I think it's a number two fan brush that I'm using here. And just going up and down, up and down. And as you will see as I'm progressing with this painting, that, uh, that I will start using highlights and using the brush strokes a little bit different. But from, 
from now on, basically I'm really just using the fan brush to do all the grass work. Um, I could have tried and use a flat brush but that would have been required a different technique and a different feel to the painting. I felt like I could achieve the grass better with this fan brush. And notice I'm using the fan brush, fan brush on its uh, up and down uh, side as opposed to using broadly to go up and down with grasses, almost like a Bob Ross technique. I'm not using that. I'm just using the edge of that brush to make these finer uh, grasses. And I'm using some darks, a little bit of uh, lighter uh, colors. So with this orange right now, what I'm doing is I'm using a lizard crimson, a little bit more burnt umber, and a little bit of ultramarine blue to make those darker oranges that I just put in there just to uh, contrast with the bottom layers and now I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight and you see this is what I'm talking about the edge of the brush and then just making these quick, quick strokes okay just to give an indication that's all I'm doing because I'm not trying to this is an impressionistic painting I'm not here to make like pure detail you got to let the viewer finish the story okay you don't want to tell the whole story just let the viewer finish it in their mind so you'd be amazed by what the mind can do and how it can fill the rest of the of the painting for you so I'm just adding all these little highlights here and there uh, this is actually the more tedious part of the painting because you're trying not to add too much and not leave too many voids either and also I'm looking at my reference photo and trying to simplify the painting a little bit more is basically what I'm doing so now I'm using my liner brush uh, just to make a little bit longer grass strokes without having the fan brush you know uh, divided into multiple little strokes so the liner brush is, comes in really handy for that and like little individual strands of grass where I'm adding more highlights. So, like I said, you know, um, you don't want to. I'm I'm adding some detail and I'm also taking away some. Okay, so like here, just I'm just basically adding a little touch of highlights on. Instead of grass, I'm adding a little bit, you know, like little foliage. Uh, to the painting just to break up the the monotony of just grass okay so now I'm just adding these little little sea oats by adding uh, ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt umber and as well a little bit of alizarin crimson these are my favorite colors I use this palette all the time I just love just the ultramarine blue and lizard crimson being that they're a semi-transparent color I could get like deep rich colors with those two uh, when I make darks you know and they fit very well with the floor of the landscape now if you're in Europe maybe you know the colors that you your palette your color palette would probably be a little bit different uh, compared to what I have here in South Florida when I look around me at it's important to you know observe around you to see the colors what could they be you know I'm looking at the Florida sky a lot of time I'm thinking oh this is like an ultramarine blue or this is a cerulean blue um, you know gray down a little bit so right now I'm adding highlights to the water by using cad yellow a little bit of white and very little cerulean blue and I'm making these little short choppy strokes just to indicate you know a little bit of uh, uh, wave action ripple what have you and as you go further back you don't want to make these long strokes like I'm doing to the front it's going to be like little dots points because remember you're receding it's further away you you don't see very well all these um, these little uh, ripples you know they become smaller and smaller as you go further and further away as you get closer those ripples and waves are a little bit longer you get more definition you see a little bit more out of it 
And also I did that to give the painting a little bit more texture. So now I'm going back to the shadows. I had enough time uh, as I was painting grasses to let the paint set up a little bit because remember I'm using Galkid, uh, which is a dryer made by Gamblin. Really like it, it works really nice. Uh, so now I'm adding ultramarine blue, but very little uh, burnt umber. So I'm letting up more, I'm using more of a blue chroma. Uh, and actually I used a little bit of Lesbian Crimson to tell you the truth and uh, less white so this is why you get in a darker blue and a little bit more um, how should I say more intense blue and after finishing the shadows uh, using the same mixture I added just a little bit of cad yellow to that blue uh, and a lot of white and this is how you, I'm able to get this greenish uh, sunlit sand that you see uh, on your left side. And now I'm just playing around. I wanted to just make this path filled with a little bit, you know, this little veiny, I don't know what you call it, this little trails of uh, grasses um, just to give it more texture. So now I'm working on the larger sea oats. And another reason for that is to give the painting uh, perspective okay now you notice that I put my horizon pretty high on this painting and with the sea oats being this uh, this high I'm giving you a sense of perspective almost as if you know you're just standing right in front of it right in front of the sea oats okay like you're not really that high off the ground so i hope this was that uh, i was able to help you understand in this short uh video how the process behind using oils and how i go about making these uh these illusions of details with very little material that was needed to create this so I hope you enjoyed it. If you had any more questions about this painting, um, please let me know and uh, leave it in the comment section and I will answer them for you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Have a great day.